reform. Also stated that Nigeria is among the top 10 reforming countries in the world. <laughs> to ensure these reforms are institutionalized, Executive Order Number 1 on the promotion of transparency and efficiency in the business environment was issued in May 2017. The order contained measures that ease the process of business registration, approval of permits, granting visas, and streamlining port operations. We are committed to continuing and accelerating the ease of doing business reforms, which are critical to attracting new investments, growing the economy, and creating jobs for our people. Although the economy is diversified with non-oil sector accounting for over 90% of total nominal GDP, the government's revenue are not as diversified yet. Our tax to GDP ratio of about 6% is one of the lowest in the world. This situation is not consistent with our goal of having a diversified, sustainable, and all-inclusive economy. Accordingly, we are stepping up efforts to engage all taxable Nigerians comply with the legal requirements to declare income from all sources and, and remit taxes due to the appropriate authorities. Already, we have introduced the Voluntary Assets and Income Declaration Scheme on the 1st of July 2017. The scheme provides non-compliant taxpayers with a nine-month window to regularize their tax status relating to historical periods. In return, overdue interest and penalties will be forgiven. In addition, no investigations or criminal charges will be brought against participating taxpayers. We expect that this scheme will widen the tax net for both the federal and state governments. I am therefore asking all Nigerians to see this opportunity and to do the right thing. Let us not shy away from our duty to build a better Nigeria. In 2016, this administration adopted a policy of allocating at least 30% of our annual budget to capital expenditure. This was entrenched in the economic recovery and growth plan to unlock further growth in the economy. This tradition was maintained in the 2017 budget and has been reflected in the proposal for 2018 in which 30.8% of total expenditure has been set aside for the capital vote. To support these efforts, we would recall that an efficiency unit was set up under the Federal Ministry of Finance to reduce wastage, flag leakages, and foster greater fiscal transparency. We have intensified the implementation of the integrated payroll and personal information system across government, ministries, departments, and agencies to automate personal records and salaries payment processes with the goal of eliminating ghost workers. 461 federal ministries, departments, and agencies have been captured on the system so far. Our target is to enroll all ministry, departments, and agencies. I have directed the military and other security agencies to ensure total compliance without further delay.
Mr. Senator President and the Right Honorable Speaker, we shall continue to develop our infrastructure across the country. Although a lot of progress has been made, the huge contractor liabilities we inherited have adversely impacted our infrastructure development timetable. Indeed, contractors were owed trillions of naira when this administration came into office. In some areas, we have made payments, payments so projects may be completed, while in others, we are reconciling the liabilities to identify and settle legitimate claims. As a responsible and accountable administration, we decided that cleaning this backlog was an important priority. For instance, at the outset of this administration in 2015, the Abuja Metro Rail project, which began in 2007, was only 50% completed after eight years. Today, in just 18 months, we have pushed the project to 98% completion. This was achieved as the Nigerian government was diligently able to meet its counter funding obligations for the Chinese loans. We have also continued work on key strategic roads. Over 766 kilometers of roads were constructed or rehabilitated across the country in 2017. For instance, work is at various stages of completion on these strategic roads with immense socio-economic benefits. One, rehabilitation of Ilorum, Jebba, Mopa, Birnungwadi, Kaduna Road. B, dualization of Oyo, of Bomusho, Ilorum Road. C, rehabilitation of Gombe, Newman, Yola Road. D, dualization of Kano, Maiduguli Road. E, rehabilitation of Sokoto, Tambual, Jega Road, and Kwantabura, Mukera Road that traverse Sokoto, KB, and Niger states. F, rehabilitation and the construction of Enugu, Port Harcourt Road. G, rehabilitation of Enugu, Ponisha, Dual Carriageway Road. H, rehabilitation of Aleshi Ugeb Road and the Iamo Yung Ugeb section in Cross River State. I, rehabilitation, reconstruction, and expansion of Lagos Ibadan Dual Carriageway Road. J, construction of Loco Oweto Bridge over River Benway in Nasarawa and Benway State. And K, construction Gokoni Bridge along Tegena Mokwa Jabba Road in Niger State. Under the Federal Roads Development Program, we recently completed a data collection exercise on the 7,000 kilometer federal road network, which was funded by the World Bank. This information is enabling us to make informed decisions regarding the planning, budgeting, and management of the federal road network going forward, we will be working based on facts rather than subjectivity. Furthermore, we have also invested a lot of time and effort in identifying alternative means of funding new projects. For example, the recent 100 billion Naira Sukuk financing will cater specifically for the development of 25 roads across the country. We also developed different structures that empower private investors to contribute to the development of roads of significant national importance. Already we are seeing results. For example, A, the Boni Bodoro 
is being jointly funded by the 